This is the 1993 video game Doom, and this is TypeScript. And this is the moment I got Doom running purely in TypeScript's type system. <laughs> Three and a half trillion lines of types totaling 177 terabytes ran through the type tracker around the clock for 12 days to get the first frame. But it was a brutal year-long journey of 18-hour days to get to that moment. Looking back to when I started, I didn't even know 10% of what I would need to make it really happen. It was so much harder than I could have imagined, because there's nothing else like this, so I had to build all my own tools, handwrite 12,364 tests, and learn multiple new programming languages to scratch and claw my way to the finish line. I built a full WebAssembly virtual machine, purely in TypeScript types, that can run other programs too. No cheating, no tricks, no other execution languages, just types. To give you a sense of the scales involved, Here's the types in a normal app compared to all the Node.js types. Node's types package is one of the biggest in all of Definitely Typed. And here's every package in Definitely Typed combined. Now let's compare that to what it took to run Doom. It's a lot. I didn't do this because I have no other way to play Doom. After 300 videos solving every type challenge, I thought I could quickly find some simple reason it's not possible. But I'm not one of those fancy 10x developers. Instead of a master of craftsmanship, I'm more a master of close enoughsmanship. But seeing people's reactions made it totally worth all the effort. No way. It's Doom running in the type system. <laughs> You're kidding me. Holy <laughs> shit, <laughs> What? <laughs> What? <laughs> it's Doom, amazing. <laughs> and yet I did manage to create what I believe is the largest TypeScript code base ever. The initial calculations were that my computer would need to churn through 1.25 petabytes of TypeScript types running for over three months, but extreme optimizations got it down to 177 terabytes in 12 days of continually running TSC to boot the game and get the first frame. This is a masterpiece. Each individual TypeScript type was hundreds of thousands of lines long. Why did you do this? Why would you keep going? Wow. Genuinely shocking. <laughs> it's amazing. It's mind blowing. That's bold. Quite impressive. Very impressive. I have a lot of thoughts. I have so many questions. And I'll answer all those questions on the next two videos on this channel. The first is an hour and a half long look at what made me even try to do something like this, almost like a condensed one year vlog. It covers lots of technical concepts too, but at a higher level. I learned a lot more working on this project than in the past decade working professionally. So there's a lot to share about the unknown unknowns that I hit. But the second video is the super technical one. We'll probably never do this again, but this one will be live here on YouTube so you can ask questions. There's at least two hours of technical stuff compiled already, so let me know your questions here in the video comments or on the Doom channel on our Discord and it'll be answered on the stream. But if you skip those in-depth videos, here's the high-level overview. I built an isolated computer from scratch, all within the confines of TypeScript's type system. This computer has RAM, disk space, a call stack, subroutines, memory pointers, execution contexts, and a whole lot of custom tooling. The computer is made of TypeScript types that serve as logical implementations for all 116 WebAssembly instructions Doom needs to run. The logic alone adds up to 18 million instructions the type checker evaluated one by one, each representing a unique machine state of the system. A TSC type check of a regular app usually has 200 to 500,000 type instantiations, but this sustained 20 million instantiations per second for the whole 12 days. The final output is a TypeScript object where each value is a line of pixels, 128,000 pixels in total, for a 320 by 200 ASCII frame. And yes, there's a way to do keyboard inputs to control a game. But this isn't your normal project because everything had to be done on hard mode. The end result is vanilla TypeScript that you can run yourself, but to make development more bearable, I had to temporarily remove some guardrails. During development only, I modified the TypeScript compiler to remove the limit for excessive stack depth comparing types, the limit for excessively deep and possibly infinite type instantiations, I set the maximum size for unions and tuples to infinity, removed the truncation limit, and of course I also removed the famous TypeScript recursion limit. I also had to raise the stack limit on my computer itself. With all these protections removed, the type tracker could easily consume 100 gigabytes of memory. Now I could experiment with types that would normally hit complexity limits, but the cost was that I couldn't make any mistakes whatsoever. The few stack traces I could get were immense, but most of the time things would just freeze. Even something as minor as misspelling an import would create an infinite loop that eventually caused a heap allocation to run out of memory and crash the whole thing. Syntax highlighting was the only tooling that even barely worked, in part because I needed to support file sizes up to one gigabyte, well beyond what Prettier could handle, and any language server integrations or linters would crash immediately. 
So although I didn't know much about compilers or virtual machine internals, after six months of work I was able to get smaller C programs up and running. But getting Doom running required a lot more effort because everything has to be encodable in types. All game maps, textures, sprites, sounds, enemy AI, weapons, items, the physics engine, audio subsystem, all game text, and everything else. Before this project, I didn't know how to do a single one of the things I'm about to list. To get Doom running, I had to build a types level garbage collector, L1 CPU cache, runtime dead code elimination, a real time memory compactor, a global value stack with depth counting for stack underflow protection. I had to support dynamic dispatch tables, module level global variables, labeled go to's, which made control flow a complete nightmare. Linear RAM is represented in a huge unsortable object with the 32 bit address keys and byte values. I found a way to pause type evaluation from types user land, which opened the door to doing full core dumps, type level exception handling, and runtime stack tracing. Under the hood, the whole engine is implemented with binary twos complement numbers stored in string literals. And because TypeScript only allows you to iterate a string from the left, I had to implement all the binary algorithms in reverse. Oh, and AI can't help with any of this stuff. It's so low level that there are no arrays or objects or strings or booleans inside the engine. Only binary numbers. And Doom only uses 64-bit and 32-bit integers. That's it. Oh, and those integers are neither signed nor unsigned. I spent a whole day figuring that one out. And I had plenty of other stuff to do instead, like how Josh Goldberg and I started SquiggleConf, a Boston-based cross-language conference for people passionate about DevTools. But through it all, I never gave up because I always thought I was right around the corner from succeeding. I just didn't know any better. My definition for success was never to actually run the game. All I wanted was the specific reason Doom can't run in a type system, but every time I hit a roadblock I always came up with some ridiculous workaround. I clung to that belief that it couldn't work and that doubt fueled me the whole time. So even now, after it's done, I have a hard time accepting it. I guess you could say I sort of nerd sniped myself. Insane for sure. I, I don't think this will be topped for sheer insanity and amount of effort for the joke. Ever probably. Just the commitment to the bit is unreal.